What's up guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Flutterflow's brand new agent feature. Uh, this feature simplifies the experience of adding AI into your app by building native functionality so that we can use that instead of just the regular API. Uh, this makes the process significantly faster and simpler. In this video today, we'll, we'll, we'll be taking a look uh, just at a basic API call where we're doing some translation. And then in the next videos, we'll be stepping up the complexity by adding in images and whatever else we can think of. All right, I hope you enjoy. All right, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna do this in three steps. The first thing we're gonna do is create the assistant in the agent tool. Then we're gonna tie that assistant into the UI and then we're gonna test. So if you did watch the last video, this UI looks familiar. Again, what we're trying to do is just create a simple uh, API call now using the agents um, functionality from Flutterflow to translate some text from, Span or from English into Spanish. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna need to do now that we have the UI already set is create the agent. So let's go in here and let's call this guy translations agent. Okay, so what are we looking at? We have a description, which is just for internal use. Okay, so this is to help us stay organized. We have the system message, which will be essentially the instructions. And then we can preload some messages. And this is to train the model on how to respond best. Okay, so before we do anything else, let's just go ahead and add a simple system message here. You are a language expert, period. Translate the following text into Spanish. Cool. So this can obviously get a lot more complex if you wanted to, but we're gonna keep it simple for now. So let's go ahead and choose OpenAI. We'll go uh, 4.0, API key, and we're gonna throw in there. If you don't know how to get your API key, I'll put a link uh, to the OpenAI docs uh, in the description, and you can just follow that and get your API key there. And for the response, we'll choose text for now. Now, in the next videos, we'll have a look at Markdown and JSON, but for now, we'll keep it simple with just text. Cool. So we can preload messages, and maybe we'll do that, but for now, let's get this publishing. Okay, so here we go. We are done deploying. Now this does take a minute and we did have to add in a description for it to go through. And then beyond that, I did add some preloaded messages here. You can see one on the user side and one on the assistant side. So this would be essentially the text that we're feeding into it uh, that we wanna translate on the user side. And then on the assistant side, we have the response. So. Now that we have this agent set up, we can go back into our UI and just tie it in. Now this is quite a bit simpler than what we were doing before. So that's why we're starting over uh, our series here and we're going to um, we're going to build off of this new agent functionality rather than go in the old school way, which would just be through the API. So you can see here we have the conversation ID and we have the text input. So let's do the text input first and we'll just choose here our input text widget. Uh, in terms of the conversation ID, this is to keep it organized so it knows which conversation it's in. Uh, we'll use here the user ID. So this way, anytime the user is uh, running one of these, one of these uh, API calls, um, it'll know that it should be referencing this conversation. So we'll give this uh, a name here. In response, sure. And then we'll add an action to, um, let's set the form field with this action output, agent response, and 
that should already be it. So let's go ahead and boot this up. And we'll see if it works. Cool. Is that it? Do it one more time. Okay. There it goes. Okay. So let's get in there and let's uh, test this out. I like to surf on the weekend and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, there you go. So it's already working. It's super easy. Uh, this is obviously just the first part. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at how to add images to this. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you were able to get some useful information from this video. Uh, in the next video, as I mentioned before, we'll be taking a look at how to use images with this agent. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.